Wow, I, I, I think I can go back now. Uh, ju just as a start, if you don't see the screen because of me, I'll step on the slide, okay? Um, yes, thank you. Uh, now everybody knows I'm a basketball player. And uh, I, I didn't see those people that asked me, you know, violin or chess or something like that. I played basketball. I started late playing basketball, okay? I started when, uh, when I was 17, so normally at that age, some people, you know, decide to hang their shoes, it's enough. Um, I played for 20 years. I played like uh, my, my girl there said that, uh, you know, in every championship, every level, whatever, the thing is that I've been successful in my life. I've been successful as a basketball player. But I also liked school. So I graduated management, business management. I took a coaching school of two years also. I um, had a master's degree in uh, European integration. And now I'm in another program of master's in business and management in London, in, uh, in England, Northumbria University. So I believe in education, in continuous education. I believe in practice. I believe in practice because I practiced all the time. But I probably learned more from sport that in any school I've been through. Because sport, I believe in sport, and sport gave me a lot. It didn't give me just, just the connection with you. It didn't give me just the connection with my teammates. It offered me a world. So I played in six different countries. I lived in six different countries, 11 years outside of country, of my own country. I'm from Bucharest, Romania. And my kid, I'm father of two, my kid, one of my kids was born in Russia because that's where I was at the time. My second almost born in Italy, but we made it back home. So my question to you is, do you think it's enough to be born in a country to belong to that nation? Sport gives you a lot of a lot of insight. Sport, it's true to yourself, and there is no shortcut to success. There is no shortcut. You can say, okay, you know, some uh, Anna Maria Bruns, uh, Olympic champion in fencing, she was lucky. No, you cannot say that. I worked every single second for my success. So, me as a basketball player, me as a person, now, after that was me as a parent. My kids look at me, and they both play basketball now. My son is 10, my daughter is eight and a half. What a surprise, they play basketball. They were born with, like, they were, I have pictures with the ball bigger than them. Um, my son, I played with number 22, so my son plays with number 22. Guess what my girl is playing with? 44. Because she wants to be twice as better as us. And it's okay. It's okay. So after that, okay, I, I go further a little bit into my community. I think that our fame and uh, uh, notoriety kind of makes us get involved. So a lot of kids look at us like role models, right? So it's our responsibility to, to act like one, is it? Maybe. Well, okay, going further, yes, I played for the national team for 15 years. And 10 of which I was captain of the national team, and I'm proud of that. And some, most, not some, most of the speeches of our coaches, when, when you get in the locker room before the game, is, hey, you guys, and we're 12 of us, right? You guys represent 20 million people. So you're here representing your, your country. And yeah, I know, you know, the name is on the back, but the flag is on the front. So I've been so many times with my teammates where my national anthem was playing, and every time I had goosebumps. 
because I do represent my country, and that's a lot for me. I belong to that. Now I'll jump to this picture, because sports unites people. It unites countries. And this was Barcelona. This is Prague, right? Great Britain, Iceland. It gets people together regardless of what? Regardless. It's interesting that the feeling of belongingness to a club, to a sports club, it's equal, or to a brand, a sports brand, it's equal to the feeling of belonging to a nation or to religion. So sports has that power. Okay, so let's narrow it down a second, right? Everybody knows who Cristiano Ronaldo is. Let me see. Everybody knows who Cristiano Ronaldo is almost. Okay, the guy is the most follow guy, person, people, human beings on earth. So social media has on Instagram 159 million followers and on Facebook 122. And you see that we have 981 in common. I don't know the other 121,999,000, but some of them were, we have the same uh, people. So together, it's 281 million. Well, of course, some of them overpass. You know, they, they get, it, they're the same. Okay, now you have another guy, Leo Messi, right? So he has also, you know, some followers, together 201 million, some of them. So these two guys together, this is Wikipedia with people in countries. Let's say together they have 400, no, let's say 300 million that they don't overpass. 300 million would put them, what? The, the fourth country? So right under United States? You know, in the history of religions, they said that in time, once you overpass communities of a million, not, not communities, but beliefs, over a million people, you know, religion would, you know, kind of take over. So the guys have this. And they are all models. And there is nothing, nothing on earth that combines people more than that. Well, let's come back to here. I am grateful that I'm friends with some athletes, right? And that it's coming with, with that, with those fans. The first one right there came after the European Championships this winter, in December, when Christina Nagu, everybody knows Christina? When Christina Nagu broke her leg, ACL, right? So the next day, we received that. These are kind of always happening. It's, it's a continuous thing. So it's, it's, this is not something. I, I couldn't put pictures. I, I would have shown you pictures. It's, you know, not good. And Ana Maria Brunze in London Olympics, they were epi team was kind of favorite to win medal. So they lost it. They had a bad Olympics. And they came sixth. Sixth. I mean, sixth in Olympics, which is the biggest contest in the world. And they came back and the, everybody was jumping on them like, really, sixth? It's not okay. You should be champion, Olympic champions, sixth. And they said, okay, yeah, you know, our mistakes. So they got like bullied because they came in sixth. So this is the reverse melt. Okay, the, the 300 million, 
Some of them are these, unfortunately. But those athletes, the high-level athletes, are the ones that I wish for my kids to put posters in their room because they have those values that you know they're right, the right values. So sport, let's, okay, let's not talk only of high-level sports, right? Sports unites people, like I said. And it unites if you go in first grade or if you do Olympics. It gets communities together and puts people together, and it doesn't matter who, right? Now, it's not enough. Because I'm an athlete, as I said, I'm well known, I have responsibilities. I have responsibilities and I'm taught from the beginning to have responsibilities for myself. When I start playing, I'm dreaming high, you know, dreaming big, looking long term, but you know what? You start short term and small in order to get there. So you have a vision. You have a vision to, to, to be great. And in that vision, you assume responsibilities and you take decisions. And sport taught me to take decisions in a fra fraction of a second. For example, when I, when I shoot a basket, I don't think of how I'm going to do the, the move. You know, I'm just shooting because I have space between me and the defender. But I'm taking that decision. And I own that decision. But you know what? In my career, I shot maybe a million shots to get ready for that shot. So I'm taking an educated decision. And I know, looking long term, I know what is good for me, for my body. I know that a lot of us think, you know, some athletes at high level, they go out, party a lot, you know. But no, we actually keep it as healthy as possible. And I played till, till I was 37 that way. Because when, when you take an engine and you just put it all in, it's not, it's, it's not going to go 100,000 kilometers. It's going to go around 1,000. So you have responsibilities for yourself. And you have to control those responsibilities. And you have to assume, you know, like, I'm, I'm not going to make excuses. Because making excuses is not going to make me better. And on the other side, you have the responsibilities for groups, teams, community, or whatever else. So in my team, I need them to know what they expect from me. So I assume my role in the team, regardless of what it is, because that gives the team the best way to succeed. I had a coach that said, you're not here to do whatever you like. You're here to like whatever I tell you to do. You know, and it's right, because you, you get in the system when you just cannot go ballistic. You do what you're supposed to do to make the team better. And yes, I don't believe in that weak link because sometimes I'm stronger than other and another time this guy might be, you know, stronger than me in different aspects. So owning your role is important in the team. Well, you learn also from mistakes. But do you? You don't learn from mistakes. I don't believe that. I, I think you learn from certified mistakes. And we look at our games all the time to see what we did wrong. We just didn't just say, OK, we lost that. Next time, we're not going to lose it anymore because I learned from my mistakes. No, we see what we did wrong, OK? Eliminate ex excuses. And once, once you're in the team, you have to know your ripple effect. So what you do, how does that affect others? But maybe it's better to think of that before. So consider consequences of what happens, right? 
Now, sports, I believe in education through sports because it teaches us values that are good for society, but only if you debrief them. So fairness. One of the definitions of sport is the fact that it's played by the rules. And we all know the rules of sport. We all know, for example, if uh, you travel, or uh, I'm, I'm not going to get in details, but we know the rules. So that gives us an even play field. So we all know the, that. Athletes, coaches, referees. You don't, you don't try to get unfair advantage and get that uneven because that doesn't make you know, fans expect what they, they see or players to know what they do. So fair play, it's part of that. Discrimination? <laughs> we, I played in, in six different countries. I played four years in Russia. I played in Italy. The thing is that I played with Russians, with Italians, with Serbians, with Americans, with everything. I, I don't care who you are. We understand each other that we want to do greatness. So it laughs in face of discrimination. It doesn't matter coaches and players, doesn't matter what nationality they are, race, gender, sexual diversity, or anything else. It doesn't, because it matters, you know, the performance and the group level. Responsibility. I can, you know, you see sometimes, and like everything, we also have our bad things and bad people or whatever. And you see people trying to cheat, trying to flop, you know, tr roll over, trying to get an advantage like that. But you see them right away. And it doesn't matter the result, it matters how you get to the result. Because if I put a medal on your necks right now, you ain't gonna feel anything. Because you can buy one of those with, I don't know, five dollars, euros, lei, whatever. But you know what I feel? I feel every little second of my life that I sweat and hurt and play and sacrifice because I don't think I had four Christmases home. I don't think I had New Year's with my family because I was who knows where. But I loved what I did. Integrity. Integrity. And, and you know, you know how sport is to, to come and, and show you those things and expect from us something that we might not know that. We're on the court and we need to act. You know, you know Virgil Stanescu from the court, whoever one knows me. You don't know me home. You don't know how good a parent I am or what, are, what is my thing. You, those 300 million don't know Cristiano Ronaldo. They know the football player and his private life, maybe some here and there tabloid, right? And fairness and respect, right? Respect is, I owe you fans as a player respect. I show you respect. I show the other guy respect. I don't care if we win, we lost. And these are times when, you know, when you lose and that adrenaline and, and all that, sometimes takes over and doesn't do great things. But at the end, we shake hands and we respect each other. And coaches have respect for players and for fans and for referees and for, for rules. And it's our responsibility to know how those rules change because we have to obey the rules all the time, not sometimes. Now, many things, in a nutshell, belonging, it's the collective we, right? It's everything. 
is the collective we, and we decide how, we, how that makes us feel the, the sense of belongingness. But also, the community or the other side decides also what is the need for you to belong. It's not only my decision, it's a mutual decision. And it's based on rich discussions and meetings and sacrifices and efforts for that to belong because I know what the team expects from me in order to belong to that team. And I know the community, right? And it's your community, and it's your neighborhood, or it's your school. It's the Cambridge school or, or anything else, and you have a responsibility to your family and to, and to your peers and to your family. And you know what? You have a responsibility for you. And be active. Get involved. You know that the game is played on the court, not in the stands. So get on the court. Thank you.